Hilda and Edwin have declared their love for each other. But when she is forced to return to Brighton, she has still not told him the truth about her past. as she was. Put myself then. Wouldn't do her no good. <laughs> She's awake, is she? She'd woke up for a bit last time I was down. She gets dreadful agony when she moves, you see. I shouldn't be surprised if she woke up again. Um, I'll just go up to my room first. Oh, I think you should see her straight away, miss. No, I must go up to my room. There's something I have to do. Have you made up my bed? Yes, miss. Thank you. I've done that double on the first floor for you. That isn't my room. Isn't that where you was when you went away, miss? I did use that room for a time, yes. But it isn't my room. My room is the little one on the top floor. Oh, dear. I didn't know. Never mind. Never mind. I'll use the one you've made up. I'm going to see Miss Gary in a moment. Off you go to bed. Why didn't they clear up properly in this house? Edwin. There is something that I must tell you. And when you know it, you must take whatever course of action you feel is right. I am not the person you think I am. Not long ago, I went through a form of marriage with George Cannon. And for 15 days, I lived with him as his wife. Not long after, I discovered that he had lied to me. And that he already has a wife who is still alive. I realized, of course, that it was my duty tell you this, this evening in the shop. But,
Brighton, 1am, dearest. This is my address. I love you. Every bit of me is absolutely yours. Write me HL. 59 Preston Street, Brighton, 1am. Dearest, this is my address. I love you. Every bit of me is absolutely yours. Write me HL. It's fine. It's so fine. Whatever other girl could have... Every bit of me is absolutely yours. There's no other girl could have written that. None. There's no other girl like her. There's not. There's just none. 59 Preston... Morning, Steph. Oh, oh, morning, Mr. Edwin. Uh, it's not quite eight. Isn't it really? Uh, no, sir. Miss Hilda Lesway is 59 Preston Street, Brighton. Oh, there's no shutters with down, Steph. Yeah. Mm. <sighs> morning, Father. <clears throat> You little know, you rhinoceros, that less than two days ago, she and I on that very spot. Meanwhile, I yearn for you all the time, all day and every day, all night and every night. Each minute seems a year when you're not with me. I long for your letters. They are my only joy. It is selfish of me, I know, to wish they could be longer and come more frequently. I love you with all my being. Unfit and unworthy as I am to do so, I love you with all my soul, yours forever. Edwin. I must write to him now. He'll understand. Of course he will. Fifty-nine Preston Street, Brighton, Tuesday. Dearest, I love you. What else can I say? I simply cannot write letters. It isn't in me. Can't you tell that from my handwriting? Not even to you. You must take me as I am. Your letters are wonderful. I am absolutely yours. H.L. Surely you could find five minutes each day to write a proper letter. That's three letters in ten days, and none of them longer than... <sighs> now I realise, I know her. I do know about your friend and she's ill and you've got to... Uh... Of course you have. She's right, isn't she? She's always right. I know she is. And I understand. If Edwin Clayhanger doesn't marry me, I shall have to stay here until she's dead. Here it is again, that awful feeling. Surely I'm not going to faint. I mustn't faint. I must sit here 
till she goes to sleep. I must arrange the... No. I must. Oh. Now, Preston Street, Brighton, Tuesday. Tuesday? I mean Tuesday. Good heavens above, it's Sunday now. Surely she could have... Surely she could. Just for five minutes, that's all it takes. I shall send her a telegram tomorrow. If I don't hear by tomorrow, I shall send a telegram. Aren't you coming to chapel? Uh, not this morning, no. Oh. I'm just waiting for Father. He's going to come. Does he know you or not? Well, I should imagine he'll guess. He knows I've still got that cold. Oh. Um... Was there any post this morning, Maggie? Not as far as I know. There never is much on a Sunday. Were you expecting something? Uh, no. Well, what I mean is, uh, I had ordered a book and, uh, I thought it might have come, that's all. I shouldn't think a boo could come on a Sunday. No. You'll be careful, laddie. Father hasn't got that yet. I'm only looking at it. You know what he's like with this Christian news. Don't I just... Do you remember Clara, what she read out? What was that? It was the first ever issue with the Christian news. I forget what they was writing about now. Something it was, and Clara read a bit out. Among those present, it said, among those present were the Prince of Wales and Mr James Bott. <laughs> I'll never forget how we laughed at that. <laughs> Let's be going then. It's father. What's up with thee? Well, I thought I'd better not go to chapel this morning, father. That cold of mine's still hanging on. Yeah. Do not get rid of it with Molly cuddling. Come on. Why didn't I tell him? Why didn't I just say I don't want to go to chapel because I'm in love? It's passion I want, not piety. All I want's a blasted letter from her. I shall tell him, tonight, when he's sitting there reading his Christian news. Good. That'll settle things all right. Shall we go then, Mrs. Nixon? Is it Mr. Bridges is preaching tonight? That's right, it is. You get a good sermon from Mr. Bridges. Oh, yes.
gone chapel tonight as well. No, I say, Father, I just wanted to speak to you. Hmm? Suppose I wanted to get married. So that's it, is it? Well, after all, people do get married. Who's been running after? I, w I was only thinking, I was only thinking, suppose Who's been I did running want to after? Get... Well, I can't rightly say there's anything uh, what you may call settled. In fact, nothing was to be said about it at all at present. But it's Miss Lesway's father. Hilda Lesways, you know. Yes, came in shop the other day. Yes. How long has that been going on? Oh, uh, over a year. Mind you, this is strictly QT. Nobody knows a word about it. Nobody. But of course, I thought I'd better tell you. You'll say nothing. She's got an income of her own. Her father left her money. Yeah, I know all about her father and her father's father. Well, lad, you go your own road. But about money, I was thinking... Well, about money. Well... I couldn't marry on 17 and 6 a week, could I? Well, I say you must go your own road. Well, at this rate, I should never be able to marry. Do you think you getting married will make your services worth one more penny to my business? Some people would say I was underpaid now. Some people, some people, some people is who? Been talking, have you? Been talking to folk? Been whining that you're hard done by? I never said that. No, because you're frighted as what folks would laugh. Seventeen and six and all you keep. I paid ten shillings to Maggie for me keep. Just reckon that ten shillings will pay your share, your share of food, your share of house, your share of servants' wages, eh? You cuddled from it to foot, you are. You struggled for nothing all your life. I made that business. I did me. Now tell me what you've done for it, eh? Well, I'll do all I can. And what about getting orders, then? <laughs> Didn't I offer you two and a half percent for every new customer you got yourself? And how many have you got? Not one. I give you a chance to make extra money and you don't take it. No, you shouldn't go running about after girls. Well, how can I get orders? How did I get them? How do I get them? Somebody has to get them. Why can't ye? Ah. Well, I'll tell you what I shall do. It's against my judgment. But at the new year, I'll put you up to a pound a week. And that's good money, let me add. What good's a pound a week? What good's a pound a week? Let me tell you that in my time, young men got married on a pound a week. Aye, a pound a week, and glad to. I couldn't marry Miss Lesways on a pound a week. I thought perhaps you might be offering me a partnership by this time. Did you? Well, then there'd be the house furnishing and so on. What about that fifty pound? That, as you were so secretive with. That money as you got from your building society share, eh? I haven't spent all of it. And if, as you say, she's got money of her own. Suppose I chucked him over. Suppose I just got out. Got out and got myself a job. What then? 
as a clerk or what? We're lucky to get a pound a week. And what else is there? Manager of a printing office in the five towns. Father's got one of the biggest printing works there is, and I'm there already as his blasted slave. What do I say to her? See here, I talked to me father about it, and he'll only allow me a pound a week. What are we to do? Do I say that? One day when he's old, I'll... Edwin! Is that you? Hello, Mr. Ockery. Well, what brings you here on a Sunday night? Oh, nothing in particular. I'm oh, working off Sunday mm. dinner, eh? Yes. Oh, and well, I've broken the law of the Sabbath myself. Been into the office. Ah, oh, came up here for some air before I went home. Fascinating, isn't it? The pride of one generation is the muck of the next. Yes. Yes. I often take a stroll around these parts. Nasty night. Ah, it's too nasty for me. I'm off home. You must come in for a bit. Oh, no. No, no, no not, you've uh... got to come in. So you might as well do it first as last. Janet's in. Ah, oh, she's a bad lot. She's like you and me. Hasn't been to church. I don't think I will. Yes, Mr. yes, I've captured you. You've got to come in. Come on. Well, that's it. Come along in. <clears throat> Thank you. Right. Thank you. Right. Prisoner, take charge of him. Hello, Mr. Clare. Good evening, Miss Orgreave. Oh, what a pleasant surprise. Well, I was, I was just after a walk and I met your father. He insisted I came back with him. So glad. Thank you. It seems ages since we saw you. I suppose it is a bit. One never quite realises how time goes by. No. I expect you're very busy in the shop. Quite busy. Oh, quite busy, yes. Well, won't you sit down? Thank you. Ah, oh, how is everything, hmm? Oh, nothing very exciting happens to us. I don't believe that for one minute. You're always so active in this house. Well, you simply must come round for some music one night. I'd love to. I really should. Heard lately from Miss Lesways. I suppose you've not heard. She's married. Married? Yes, it is rather sudden, isn't it? T to a Mr. Cannon. She's known him for a very long time, I think. When? Yesterday. I had a note this morning. It's quite a secret yet. I haven't told father or mother. But she asked me to tell you if I saw you. Well, Mr. Edwin, it seems we can only get you here by main force. Are you feeling quite better, Mrs. Orgreave? Oh, much better, thank you. I was given such royal treatments, I couldn't help but get better. I'm so glad. And how are you, Mr. Edwin? Oh, yes, I'm fine. Oh, it's been such a cold winter already, hasn't it? Yes. Goodness knows how we shall feel in January if it keeps on like this. I certainly hope that you're more sensible than my children are. There's not the one of them that wears enough clothes. They just laugh at me and think I'm a fox. <laughs> oh, yes, you do, Janet. I know quite well. But if you catch a chill at this time of year, you can wait until the spring before you manage to shake it off. Yes. Um, I must just run in home a second. I shall be back in three minutes. Oh, dear, must you really? Yeah, they didn't know I'd be out for long, you see. But I shall be back in three minutes. I really shall. Cannon. She's with Cannon now, this instant, somewhere. She's with him. My face is quite normal, isn't it, Odd? Can't help thinking about her with that old man, that Sunday school teacher at Mr. Shushan's at the centenary. Can't help thinking how gentle she was with him. Well, it's happened, hasn't it? It's happened and that's it. Somewhere, this very moment, she's probably in Cannon's arms. I'm going to have a child. She doesn't hear what I say to her now. 
Well, she'll know soon enough. going to have a child. The doctor says there's no doubt I am. Oh, queer. I'd like another biscuit. I don't want an Osborne. One of the others. The rest of the world are done with me. But I must survive. Oh, I'm too bad I really am. There I go, finishing tale of a tub when I should have been reading Helen tonight. I'll never keep up with my reading program if I go on doing things like that. <laughs> Still, wonderful stuff, it really was. Helen. Due for completion, April 8th. Oh, still time to catch up if I get on with it. Tale of a tub, finished. April 3rd. 1886. Brighton, November 81. Who the heck said my... Maggie? Have you had my pencil sharpener? Pencil sharpener? On the left-hand drawer of my desk. Oh, yes. I had a note to write this morning and my pencil broke. I do wish you wouldn't interfere with my things. It's only a pencil it's sharpener, It's not a Eddie. question of only, it's a question of I like to know where things are. I'm sorry, I'm sure. I didn't think you'd mind. How did you know there was a sharpener there? Because I was in your room once when you were using it. But you must see, surely. It's very annoying to want to use something yourself and then to find it's gone. I don't know, Edwin. I really don't. I sometimes think you're a regular old maid. And what's that supposed to mean? You're exactly like father sometimes, you are. Like father? Me? I can't believe you're only 30 sometimes. I'm just asking you don't take my pencil sharpener. Touch a thing in your room, you're flying to it, Tessie. And why shouldn't I? It is my room. Does Father know about that new gas stove you've got? Does he know you put it down to his account? He'll be in a right old rage when he finds out, you know. He won't even notice. He hardly notices I'm around these well, days. Well, when he does, don't come to me and say I didn't tell you so. Had a good day, Father. Waste of time. Do not buy that machine, then, Father. Buy it? Did I just buy it? Price he was asking. State it we're in. Half a day wasted, a blasted journey. <sighs> Going back to your room? Uh, yes, Father. Nothing happened then. Sorry, Father? In shop! I left you in charge oh, of no, shop. Oh, no, Father, nothing out of the usual. Mm. Mr. Preaker came in to place his order. I must not make a fortune out of that. Oh, and he told me to tell you. 
That uh, Sunday school teacher, Mr. Shushens. Shushens? Ah, oh. what about him? Oh, nothing really. He, uh, he said he'd been taken ill. In the workhouse, he said he was. Which one? Big pardon? Which workhouse? Uh, the Bastille, don't they call the place? And what time of the day did you know of this? Uh, when Mr. Preaker was in. What time? About half past three, I think it was. Well, I couldn't tell you before, Father. I haven't seen you, have I? He's a rum cove sometimes. <coughs> I'm organising it now, Mr. Klein. You'll be able to see him in just a very few minutes now. I think you'll find you're quite cosy in here. But if there's anything you want, just tankle this bell and someone will be with you right away. What's your name? Clay Anger. Clay Anger. Stand still there, come on. Keep you still now, Mary. Children, how many? Just these two. Dinner cry now, Mary. Children's names are? Darius and Mary. And how old are they? Nine years and seven. Will you keep still now? You'll be warm in a bed, love, very soon. Quiet! You washed yourselves there, and you put on these clothes. And there's no sense in squawking. This way? Come on! This way? That way. You can't expect to be all together. These lots of other young lads are there. For what you're about to receive, may the Lord make Come us Come forward, the lad who ran away. Let us be a lesson to you, Darius Koyanga. Make sure as you never do same. Charity was given, and you've charity scorned. Ungrateful beggar ran away. Get him over the table. Get his shirt off his back. You must put your faith in God, my lad. <coughs> Hold his head down, will you? <coughs> Watch this and have no anger. <coughs> not me. Please, God, not me. <coughs> Get over, will you, and let us sleep. I gotta sleep. <coughs> you will have time. I don't want to blast his sleep. I don't want to. <laughs> we're so sorry to have kept you waiting, Mr. Clang. If only we'd known you were coming, I do assure you there wouldn't have been this delay. Can I say now? At once, Mr. Clang. Of course you can. Shall I leave you alone, Mr. Cleanga?
understand it, do they? Yes, Father, it's a funeral card. I want it edged in black and on the very best card, and I want them run off this afternoon. They're doing that job for Salterns, Father. It's due for delivery to I'm nature. I'm not asking as to what they're doing. I'm telling you as to what they'll do. You'll get that card over to Big James now, and you tell him, as I say, I want they first. Here's a list of the people they're going to. And I want everyone near the post tonight. I don't think we'll get all these in the post tonight. Well, you blasted, do as I blasted, say. Get stiffered on it. Get them all on. But get yourself over to Big James now. And get those cards near the post tonight. Yes, Father. Uh, you go out. Did you hear the paper, boy? I don't think so. It's a special edition of the Home Rule Bill, a full report of Mr Gladstone's speech. Oh. I've had a quick glance through. He wants them to have their own parliament in Dublin and be taxing themselves and controlling the police and no Irish members at Westminster at all. A separate nation, that's what he sees. Well, he must be right, mustn't he? It's the only way. Be fireworks for the old man for a day or two, but he'll have to get used to it, won't he, eh? I wish I'd been at the Liberal Club tonight. There'll be some excitement down there, all right. Why aren't you there, then? I never go out on Tuesday, you know that. Tuesday's one of my studying nights. Look, I must go and look at this properly. Where's Father got to, do you think? Hasn't he come in yet? No. That funeral must have finished hours ago. He's getting old, his father. I've never known him fuss about like he did over there. Well, the poor man was in the workhouse, Eddie. Oh, yes, of course, and I'm sorry for him, but what's that to Father? I don't know. Anyway, I must go and read this. Did nothing at all. You're a good boy, Darius. I want ye to have this. Thank you. 
I know as ye'll do well. Even to you, Mr. Clay Anger. Passable evening at the time of cheer. But still. Is that the same, Mr. Clay Anger? out of this place. It's been terrible. You've no idea. Nay, nay. Mrs. Clayanger, you're going home now. And your husband's got a job to go to and all. How can we ever thank you enough? Nay, nay, come, nay. <laughs> and the lad'll not be going down Pot Bank again. I've got him a job with Prentiss. You'll have a like for that, won't you, Doris? the old man. Hello, Father. Anything wrong? Mm. Funeral go up all right? <laughs> in paper. <laughs> Shall I put out the gas or will you? I don't know. Thank 
Better not sit there. Come into the dining room a bit. <laughs> Better not sit there. It's chilly. Come into the dining room a bit. <laughs> Better have that coat off, hadn't you? Well, will you eat something? Oh, my God. 